there's that many people that watch YouTube now compared to when I was a kid. Because now, when you think about it, you've not just got us watching it, our parents are now watching it because they want to know tutorials on how to cut the grass. Well, actually, no, that's not a good example. (laughs) (laughs) Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome back to the Fine Cup Podcast. Uh, We've been a little while, longest break, but... Uh, Very long, done. Jeff. It was your fault. <laughs> but n- need not worry. We are we yeah, are still in, here. He's, we, he's in denial. <laughs> we are we are here now, and that's all he's that in, matters. He's, he's in denial, ladies no, and gentlemen, what, about the old what thing. matters. <laughs> what matters is the present. <clears throat> and well, he was to be fair, he was out filming, guys. Uh, we're, we're not going to give away too many details there, but um he was naughty. actually filming. Uh, well, uh, and then last week it was just like, honestly, I forgot, and he forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm ashamed to say, uh, uh, but I knew you were indisposed as well, weren't you, Hayden? I'm always indisposed. Yeah, but um, but like I said, I had to drag my ass up from like the bottom end of a barrel to oh. come on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. But what matters is the here and now. And we are here. We are now. We are now here. So. That was like a politician, Jeff. <laughs> oh, do you want you to just leave? You're going to call me a politician. Like... <laughs> well, uh, nice, my there, boy. Was, there was a politician that came near my area, actually. Ooh. You know, the Labour um, leader guy. Oh, who is that then? I can't... You know what? I, I can never pronounce his name, so you know it anyway, Jeff. You already know what it is. You, know, oh. you already know who it is. It's Keith, isn't it? Yeah. Mm, Mr. Keir Starmer Esquire. Mr... Didn't he get kicked out of a pub for, like, breaking rules or something like that? No, he, he just wanted a drink. He just got kicked out for that. Oh. Uh, that's... Funny, funny enough... That same landlord kicked out Nigel Farage, I think, shortly after the Brexit referendum. Okay. It's like, do your research. It's like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if a pub wanted him there, then I guess maybe they're conservatives. I don't know. Yeah, well, landlords have barred people like Sunak from their pubs. It's like, Ew! When oh, was, yeah, hey, I can't was... wait to go to the pub. And then it's like, it, uh, he's local. He was like, "No, you're barred. You're not allowed in." Yeah, there was <laughs> there was actually there was actually a story. To be honest with you, um, Conor McGregor got in some trouble. I think it was last year for smacking a guy in a pub or some like an old guy. He was completely in the wrong, by the way. I'm not here to defend Conor McGregor in any way about it. But then, the pub that he smacked the guy in, he actually bought, and then he barred the guy. Oh. That he smacked from the pub. I'm like, really? I'm like, that's so petty. Shouldn't you smacking him pub? be a punishment enough, whatever he's done? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't understand it. Like, I would have, like, if it was me, I, yeah, I would have bought the pub and I would have, like, gave him some free whiskey or something like that, <laughs> you know, just to make it up to him. But no, Conor McGregor, like, just said he's banned. I'm like, really? Okay. Uh, I'm like, he punched the guy, which is wrong anyway, which is wrong for you to do to him. And then you just ban him from the pub. That might be his favorite pub, like his local mm. spot. And then you just ban him. I'm like, come on. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's like pubs have like a, a law onto their own. Like, uh, uh, it's just when people like get barred and then they uh, they come back like four years later, <laughs> and as soon as they step yeah. in, landlord looks over like you're still barred and like <laughs> it's, it's a landlord's off like a a facial recognition software. Print they must have like photos up, but it's quite strange if they can remember somebody's face after like four years. Yeah, they must have done something really, really horrendous. A photographic memory or something like that, you know. Mm. 
then again, like if, if it's someone like Sunak or Starmer or Farage, then it's like, well, yeah, the faces are always going to be on the news and they're always going to annoy somebody because that's part of the job description of an MP. Yeah. Just to annoy at least half your, well, less than half of your constituents so that you still get voted in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Farage is always in the pub, isn't he? Hmm. <laughs> Which is he probably had too many when he's doing his campaign stuff, probably. Yeah, it's like anti lockdown <laughs> parties. Oh, what are you on? You, you're just creating parties for the sake of it. First of all, UKIP, and then Brexit, which is like, why? <laughs> and, and now, like, oh, an anti lockdown, which I don't think is actually done, but still, like, the sentiment behind yeah. it is just like, I mean, I've got a. I mean, I respect people's opinions because some people really like Nigel Farage, you know, and I think that's to do with his background more than anything. Um, I think that because if you think about it, like working class people are going to have respect for somebody that's come from a legitimate work background more than somebody who's gone through, like, I don't know. I don't like using classes, but as you know, I've got to use it in this yeah. instance. Middle class, you know, um, private education upbringing. But there's nothing wrong with that. Like, it's not their fault that they were brought up as middle class or like, you know, went into private education. But that's just, it's just what it is, isn't it? Yeah, but it's just strange that Farage is being counted as that. Like, really, Farage? You know, the person who generally has quite a lot of stock in businesses that would have benefited a lot from Brexit. Yeah. Or like uh, his little clique, his social contacts, which... I think I mean, that's what... I, ju I just think that's why a lot of people respect him more because he has he's not got a background like, you know, other MPs. And I think... We need more people that come from working class backgrounds in Parliament because I think that would get their respect a lot more. And a I lot agree more with insight. that point. That point. Although the issue is that um, you need to like uh, have a like some capital in order to run like a campaign. You can't have a job while you're having a campaign. Oh yeah, yeah. So people Obviously. who are on um, like, say, like middle classes especially lower classes, because a lot of people in lower classes won't be able to become politicians. Yeah. So it is stacked up against, it's mainly people in the upper classes who do yeah. that. And all you need are upper classes, uh, well, people in the upper classes who have general disregard for the middle and lower classes, which I think uh, we can agree there are plenty of those types of people, which, like you say, nothing wrong with being upper class, but I would say there is something wrong with being upper class and having a disregard for people who are not as financially fortunate as you, especially yeah. when you have that power to actually use, do some yeah. good. And then all you do is just enrich yourself yeah. even further. It's like, bro, you, you're going to be fine on your 5 million or whatever this is, but uh, you running a campaign to say that, migrant workers are the real threat to Britain as opposed to again go, going into politics here sorry guys um, <laughs> but there uh, is there is an interesting thing coming out of this though I've got well I'll let you finish your story first but I've got oh no I'm done I'm gone. oh well who's the guy who owns Top Man and Top Shop and Denman's I can't remember his name off the top of my head idea. but he's a, he's a sir isn't he He's knighted. Okay. And I, along with other people, would like to see it removed personally. Why's that? Because he closed he he closed all those stores down and like laid everybody off, even okay. though he's worth he's worth quite a lot of money. Mm. So it's just like, well, why don't you just 
financially support your workers for a bit during the tough time and wait until you know things get better like they are now yeah. but to be I guess there is an argument to that that the high street is dying which is a very good case I guess but you know like a lot of stores have gone you know a lot of the denim stores and top shop stores they're all gone all those workers have lost their jobs mm. and it's just like well could he have not like maybe forked out a bit of his own money to just support his workers during the pandemic and stuff. Yeah. The, the socialist than, in me definitely agrees with you. Like, you know, yes, he has, yes, it is his money and he has the right to do whatever he wants with it, but he's got people working for him and those people, you know, deserve a bit of respect mm. and, you know, and he should look after him because at the end of the day, they've looked after his business, which means they've looked after him. So he should look after them. And if he's slightly more out of pocket because of it, he's not going to be out on the streets, is he? Well, no. But how many no. of his employees potentially would be living paycheck to paycheck? Well, a lot. You're talking 2,000. I don't know how many there is. You know, there's a few. There's quite mm. a few employees. And I'm and I mean, I'm the type of guy that doesn't slag rich people off because a lot of them have earned the money. Like mm. a lot of them have built their own businesses and earned their money. And you know what? That's I've got respect for that because they've earned it. But are you when you say rich people, are you mainly talking about uh, well, actually, talking... no. Rich, rich people's an unfair point. Actually, there it's arbitrary, isn't it? We're, it's we're, it's what, an unfair. It's an unfair rich. label. Mm. It's an unfair label, really. I don't know. Maybe like a millionaire, maybe mm. or something like that. Like you know, Eli Musk. The reason Eli Musk is um, rich is because he worked for it. No. Wait, what, what do you mean? The reason why he's rich is because his parents benefited from apartheid businesses exploiting South African labour. Oh, no. I'm... His parents are rich. Oh, no, the wrong guy. I've got the wrong guy, sorry. Ah, okay. Elon Musk, mm, naughty, bad man. <laughs> sorry, my, my opinion, my opinion, I think he's no, not no. very nice. No, I just, but... no, I got it wrong. I got it mixed up with, um, what's his face? Amazon guy. Yes, he's, yes, he's done some shitty things. But at the end of the day, he's built a business like Steve Jobs did. Uh, I don't know too well. much about his background, but Bezos getting rich off the exploitation of zero hour contracts and yeah. minimum wage workers, like pissing in a bottle because you're not allowed to go to the toilet. I'm like, yeah. I mean, I do, I do agree with that. Um, but he did build his own business as such as well. I, I respect the whole building it. the business, but I don't yeah. respect oh, yeah. um, not treating the people who work for you with the bare bloody minimum. It, yeah. It's uh, Well, you could argue, yeah, that, that's absolutely true, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna slag those guys off simply because they're rich. No, no. Obviously, I'm gonna criticize them because of the way they treat their employees. Which is, and also Steve Jobs could obviously potentially be in there as well. To be honest, mm. even well, I don't really want to speak ill of the dead because that's mm. not the best thing to do. Bill Gates, like uh, you got the Melinda and Gates Foundation, I think that's what yeah. it's called. Which yeah. okay, yeah, Bill Gates, he benefited from his parents' uh, connections and prior businesses. He's not a self-made billionaire. Because, to be honest, no billionaire is self-made. Um, but he did... He's still investing quite a lot, like uh, the whole vaccines thing. Yeah. A lot of that has been done to his non-profit fund, uh, funding because of it. Or like, yeah. different technologies, like um, uh, those little sachets that have these things that you can put to dirty water and uh, shake it about a couple of minutes it's fine it's because it like filtrates different um like, yeah, things did within it, the water 
Yeah, didn't he make human shit like water? Yeah. That's, that's... Probably not him. Probably someone who worked <laughs> for him. Uh, but no, yeah, because yeah. of his funding, that, that happened, which was brilliant. And his... I love his uh, justification for it. I, was, I think I saw it in a Mark Rover video, but his yeah. justification that if the humanitarian aspect isn't enough for some people, the economic uh, response is this. The poorer countries are the more politically unstable countries. The politically unstable countries are the ones that tend to have a lot more war, famine, disease, and they're the ones that... Um, that well they they can't grow economically because of it if yeah. you uh, uh ship aid to different countries that need it first of all you're gaining uh political relations with them so when it comes to uh, extremism they're less likely to uh want to attack your country than another one there's also the building up of other economies benefits uh your own economy because if more people yeah. have more money, well, it can live longer. They can, uh, like their economy is going to thrive more. Yeah. And when they thrive more, people are going to earn more. People are going to have more disposable income. Now, when it comes to your disposable income, who are they going to buy the products off? If they're not going to buy it from people like domestically in their own country, they're going to buy it from other places. Yeah. There we go. Up your yeah. exports. That that is why China is doing really, really well when it comes to their foreign policy. They don't try to invade other people who impose their own ideology because they absolutely don't. But what they do is um, inject economic stimulus into African countries, and what, that's why Africa tends to side a lot more with China versus the US. Yeah, there was that whole conspiracy theory that China is secretly trying to take over the world. Wow. No, that's the theory <laughs> that the Soviet Union were going to do that. Yeah, it was somewhat like China was trying to get units over to this country and that country, and like they were trying to invade this country so they could get closer to that country or something like that. I can't remember the exact theory. Wait, is that an actual conspiracy theory? I don't know. Somebody was telling me about it. Oh. It may be some, it may be I've just been some of that some bullshit that somebody made up on the spot with me, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Um, but yeah, what was I saying about, what was I saying about rich business owners? Oh, you know, sorry, I, I digressed, didn't I? Yeah, well, <laughs> you always do, Jeff. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Never mind. Um, I can, look, at the end of the day, you've got to have some respect for Rich, rich business owners because a lot of them have had to work really hard for what they've got. I'm not saying that they're perfect because a lot of most of them aren't. They've probably done some shitty things and probably treat some people like shit. But um, you know, it's you can't like they've earned their livings at the end of the day. Like they've worked those out. They, they work those hours that other people wouldn't to get to where they are, which is, well, I'm not saying all of them because obviously you've got Donald Trump who basically scammed everybody and got rich off it. Oh, political hot take right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, I don't, I can't even remember what my point was, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I understand your point. But, um, I mean, my point, uh, just to play off yours, that, yes, being rich isn't inherently bad, but in the end of the day, respect is earned and people listen and look at how you treat people. Yeah. And trying to organise a coup with the CIA within Bolivia to prop up a fascist government in order to get cheap lithium from Bolivia does not now wanted to colonize mars does not detract from the fact that you wanted that to happen so yeah mm, yeah there was a they actually put, did they put did <laughs> they put, they put like a helicopter out didn't they on mars or something like that that was nasa oh that was nasa was it 
Mm. Yeah, I get confused sometimes of when it's SpaceX and when it's NASA, but obviously the Mars mission is NASA, isn't it? Mm. So I actually saw, um, I can't remember who it was who said this, it was some celebrity saying that we should be focusing on the Earth rather than Mars. I mean, that's not an unreasonable point, but... Well, no, it isn't, definitely. It mm. is, I don't know. I'm a bit... Obviously, I'm interested in stuff like that, so it's like... Yeah. I'm kind of happy it's happening, but, um, yeah, it's not necessary, I guess. Mm. I just think the whole thing with Bolivia and Elon Musk sort of, like trying to angle for cheaper lithium from there with a fascist government and it's like oh yeah fascist uh, coup and then the actual elections happened and said no the people of bolivia by a large margin still wanted the socialist government there okay which is is interesting because of the general inane um ramblings that you get from certain people about socialism. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's not communism. Okay. Um, Sorry. No, let's... So, obviously, we've got Prince Philip, who mm. who passed away recently. Um, we talked about the royal family quite a few weeks ago, didn't we, and the whole yeah. situation that was going on. It's 9th just, of April. <clears throat> something like that. Mm. And this has now come about after everything that Harry and Meghan has said. Does it? Do you think that it's going to affect the way that they're viewed now that he's died after the whole public, you know, uh, outrage and stuff like that? I would say no. Reason being is that after uh, Philip came out of the hospital, they said, "Yeah, we're giving him a clean bill of health." Whether that's what the what they just said to the public, or whether that that's what the actual doctors said, that was what was said. Yeah, you can only judge by what is said. Yeah, and they they even said that they wouldn't have. Excuse me, they wouldn't have released it if uh, they knew that it was gonna. Well, if he was either very ill or just in hospital or dead. Mm, yeah, but I think the points weren't. There's still in the interview. Uh, there's still a lot of respect given to the Queen, and I think by proxy, Philip. I don't think they really mentioned him, did they? No. It was it was mainly about the other members, I guess, and the people that manage the royal family as well. Yeah, the the firm, as it's yeah. it's called. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. yeah but. Uh... I don't think people are going to think less favorably on them because, yeah. Although on another point, it was Prince Andrew's first televised appearance since that interview. Yep. And he was sweating. Yep. Um, I'm not going to go into his accusations or his allegations, whatever you want to call them, I guess. But um, yeah, I think he'll be sweating a lot in his other TV appearances as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, just... he's. I think he's been hated for years, to be honest. Like oh. because he he's considered more of a. Actually, I don't really want to go into that, but um, kind of a poser, isn't he? By a lot of people. I'm not saying, yeah, I'm not saying that he is a poser. This is just what I've heard mm. from other people because I don't look into the royal family too much, to be honest. Well, you can't even even call him a, a paedophile because he's not been prosecuted. It has to be alleged paedophile. Mm. And I'm just saying that as a general rule of thumb. If someone hasn't been properly uh, convicted legally, I have yeah. to say allegedly because it, it has been. And it is just alleged, but it's alleged by quite a few people. So make that if you will. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to go into okay too much of that um, the whole nonce thing. I mean, there's there's other channels that go around calling people nonces. If you want to look at them, 
yeah, and not, we know not on this the, channel. We know, we know we know what those channels are called because I've <laughs> I've already said I've already Ooh. hinted at who it was. <laughs> Hayden's full of hot takes today. Oh, <laughs> you've been saving them up, haven't you? Just like oh, I can't wait to get out my hot takes this week. I mean, I could make loads of hot takes, but it's just we're not that kind of channel. <laughs> oh, too too hot for YouTube. I mean, we were just talking about Jake Paul before that. <laughs> <laughs> whole thing well eh, you've got all the accusations against Jake Paul which vary oh, which from very <laughs> which one <laughs> well they, they vary from outlandish to pretty credible um, oh, which yeah again not going to go into those um Maybe in another episode. Maybe we'll never talk about this again. Who knows? We yeah. try to stay out of the YouTube drama, guys. You're the one who brought on Jake Paul. Yeah, that is true, but I don't know. It just came out. You were asking for hot takes and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Because I thought we were a film podcast and we haven't mentioned <laughs> anything about film on on this podcast as of yeah they, this must be some sort of record yep absolutely should we change so that yeah so let's get mm. let's get on to film anyway because mm. we do normally kind of ramble on about stuff that the world i guess yeah politics politics the economy it's, uh. it's just you, <laughs> jeff, you, jeff, you, <laughs> jeff you just bring it out in me <laughs> Well, you can't just blame me. You're the one who was like, oh, yeah, guess what? Like, Kiss Starbuck came to near my <laughs> where I live. Uh, I knew straight away you're going to latch onto that. <laughs> oh, well, no, I, don't, I, th- I thought you wanted to do that. I didn't know you wanted to do it on my behalf. Oh, uh, dear. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's, yeah, let's we're, get we're just as bad as each other. Yes. All right. Um, film, a question being filmmakers on youtube can filmmakers like mainly independent filmmakers garner a following on youtube general bracket question hand it over to you what do you think um it depends what are you define as filmmaking are you talking about feet are you talking about um fictional works dramatic works Documentary, uh, reality, bloggers. Oh, mm. yeah, there's like a, a spectrum, isn't there? Yeah, because obviously the different, the main difference between mainstream TV and YouTube is the blogging mainly. Is kind of like the blogging side of it, I would say. Mm. And people like just talking into cameras, really. You don't really get that kind of stuff on tv well you do but it's not the same as watching it on youtube it's like uh well would you consider uh people making soaps as filmmaking yeah okay there would be others that wouldn't though would they I guess it's all filmmaking because it's still mm. using a camera and it's still editing. So it's it could all be classed as filmmaking, really. Is this filmmaking? I mean, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I don't I don't know. What is filmmaking? What is filmmaking? What is <laughs> art? <laughs> uh, yeah, because if even we, if, I mean, if we want to talk about like, say, for example, if we're talking about indie filmmakers, um, like that make, I don't know, feature films or low budget films, short films. Um, there's a few, there is a few examples out there. Um, Cinema Massacre, James Rolfe, he's probably one of the biggest examples. In fact, he's, he's the one who kind of started the whole um, video game slash rant, I guess. I don't know if that's really what it is. Mm. Yeah. Kind of video videos on the internet. It even start on YouTube. That's how like crazy it is. Wow. He started on a, a website called game trailers, which is no longer a website. I believe 
it might still be archived on there. I'm not sure, but um, they're no longer a company. That's how old. Mm. That's how long we're talking. Two thousand and five, two thousand and six. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, obviously he started out doing that and obviously went into other things as well. But I think he mainly does AVGN stuff now mm. and as well as his movie reviews and stuff like that. I'm guessing he did do the um, feature film, the AVGN featured film. Okay. Which was an hour and a half, I believe. Something like, I've not seen the film. Um but he has a he has a huge following, and still mm. a huge following, which is kind of credible to him. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, he's a yeah. He's. I think he. I think he's moved away from filmmaking a bit now, though. I think he. Well, no, he's still doing filmmaking, obviously, but he's moved away from the whole. In, I think he's moved away from the whole independent filmmaker label and just doing the AVG and stuff and just the general YouTube stuff, I think, now. Mm. More than, like, the indie filmmaking that he would, well, he was doing. Uh, I tend to find a lot of filmmakers, um, like filmmakers on YouTube, tend to do mainly tutorials. Like, you you look at their channels and the mainly tutorials, because you look at, say, Film Riot, those guys, yeah. they are filmmakers. They do a lot of stuff, and occasionally you see they made like, they had shorts and that and like their tutorials are really good like you learn a lot from them like because they're that's how people will mainly know them like you go onto youtube how do you um how do you film a scene at night or something like that and film right yeah. is one of the ones who that comes up because they've been around for years and they've yeah. got a massive backlog. People look at their stuff and like, oh, okay. And then they look at other things like the titles really grip you. And um, yeah, uh, which is great. All, all power to them. But the question, I think, uh, can you, maybe if I modify my original question, can you make a following on with uh, just films? No, like, uh, you know, tutorials or blogs or podcasts anything like that um i guess epic rap battle might be an example maybe maybe not because it's a it's got the same formula to it but it's they mainly release um man this is going back some years now actually um mm. obviously they release music videos with like one iconic you know character or famous person against another iconic mm. character or famous person. Like you had Clint Eastwood versus Bruce Lee and stuff like that. So maybe that, I don't, I don't know if it's still around to be honest. Mm. I think, I think YouTube's kind of gone away from stuff like that. Don't you think? I think the, I, there was a video I actually saw the other day called the golden age of the internet is over. Okay. And maybe that, because I think the problem with a lot of stuff now is YouTube want people to watch the same people all the time because they know that brings in the views, mm. the money, and obviously the ad revenue and stuff. And, well, a lot of the stuff out there's blogging, and most of the popular people are, like, bloggers and stuff like that. So it kind mm. of takes away from... I guess the other markets out there on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, just tying in with your point there that they want to watch like the same people. So presumably they have to have a high turnaround, but for films, like especially narrative film, uh, the high turnaround isn't really possible if you want quality. Yeah. And let's say you make uh, a, a 10 minute short film that you if you have like one week of writing, another week of planning, uh, two or three days shooting and another week of editing, that's almost a month of uh, just production on that. Now, obviously yeah. like it can like, it could be longer, it could be shorter, but yeah, a 10 minute video a month, uh, people, 
Uh, they might watch it, but they wouldn't like it wouldn't be recommended by the algorithm, which is, yeah. is the other thing, isn't it? Yeah, I actually like. To be fair, there are there are channels out there that do filmmaking and they do it well, and they don't they're not bloggers and stuff like that. They are popular as well, like slow mo guys and stuff like that. Like they're popular. Oh yeah, you know. So maybe it's not all just bloggers. It's other stuff as well. Obviously, you've got um, a show I like to watch actually on YouTube. It's called it's called Jubilee the channel. I don't know if you've ever seen it. No. Well, there's they do a few different like game shows on there. Like there's there was like like say for example, there will be people in this like cube, and in the cube you've got six gay people but one of them isn't actually gay they're just pretending to be gay oh 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 mm. and well they basically have well these people have to like source out who the liar is mm. based on talking to them and asking questions to each other and stuff like that that's quite an interesting show i think it's like among us yeah but instead of the imposter it's the gay person. Yeah. Like yeah. Well, it's of, not like, it's, this person is sus. So. It's not it's not just gay people as well. It's like um people that are Trump supporters. Um mm. <laughs> again, people, yeah, yeah, that was you. That was you. You you can't you you that, mentioned the T word. <laughs> um people that are vegans and stuff like that. You know, it's mm. very that's quite an interesting channel. It's basically just among us, but in real life. <laughs> yeah. It's it's interesting. It's interesting how people react and how people's perceptions change through the series and stuff like that. Mm. You know, I think that's quite a cool thing they do. There's probably more channels out there like it. To be fair, to be fair, that follows the similar framework as a game show, a typical TV game show thing. Even well, yeah, though the- it might not be uh, half an hour long or twenty five minutes long. It's more like ten minutes long, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's the point I made about is YouTube eventually going to overtake TV? It could. Mm. It could overtake TV. So, uh, yeah, because all you have is, like, you get your crew of, like, uh, or or your, uh, like, your researchers, your producers, and then coming yeah. on set, you get your camera, lighting, sound people, so you get your set dressers, again, bang because it, it, it's general simple set isn't it it's not too yeah. complex and uh, then you get your editing team your post team they whack it together and it's like a general like uh, sausage machine of content isn't it yeah yeah well they are working well to be fair that's how a lot of youtubers going now i think <clears throat> that that was a point Kess i made in one of his videos although he kind of is a bit like a hypocrite now come well of because of he left youtube originally for like a year i think and he came back and basically stated that youtube is no longer youtube it's no longer about the you and youtube like there's people out there now that have editors that have cameramen that do all the work for him whereas youtube was originally you do it yourself kind of um the co- well, the content creators were kind of like they did everything themselves, whereas now it's kind of like a lot of the people that do YouTube have editors, cameramen, stuff like that. Yeah, although... that was that was kind of the point he made. Although a lot of people still do their own editing and mm. all their own stuff. Would you say that's a bad thing? That uh, obviously uh, where content creators expand, but they can't do everything themselves, so they hire other yeah. people. Is would you say that's a, a negative or a positive? I'm not sure to be honest with you. It's I've I've been watching stuff on YouTube since being a kid, basically. Like I've just accepted the change over mm. time because you have to remember when I was a kid, you know, people did stuff themselves on youtube they didn't have all these producers and cameramen and editors and stuff like that it was just 
like videos were lucky to get a million views mm. like on YouTube, whereas videos are getting, you know, like three million views daily. Now it's crazy, really. I think I think YouTube's just expanded, hasn't it? Like there's that many people that watch YouTube now compared to when I was a kid. Because now, when you think about it, you've not just got us watching it. Our parents are now watching it because they want to know tutorials on how to cut the grass. Well, actually, no, that's not a good example. <laughs> <laughs> how to cut the grass in the most effective way. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> you're right there oh dear i messed up i messed up big time there <laughs> <laughs> sorry oh man i messed up big time <laughs> my my face has gone bright red we'll cut this out anyway uh, well, no, no, no. Laugh. Laughter's the best medicine. <laughs> Just blame your white balance. <clears throat> this is a blunder, people. Although it's going to be live, I guess. Yeah. No, Anyways, it's let's your white balance. But let, let's let's find let's find a better example before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know how to put a wardrobe together or something like that. I guess. Yeah, yeah. As like change your oil or yeah, like how well yeah to do anything on like there's car mechanic stuff on there and everything. Yeah, so it's like making par- stuff. Yeah. So our parents are now looking at YouTube because they want to know this, that, and the other. And our and my grandparents even look on YouTube sometimes. So it's like mm. just a wider audience overall. It's Maybe. just widened the audience. Mm. Well, maybe yeah. being inside a lot, not having too much content, so uh, older people wouldn't normally have like looked at YouTube, explore yeah. it, and they're like, "Oh yeah, quite a few of them are like, mm, I like this." And then you know, when back to normal, they'll they'll, they'll be like, "Oh no, I'm going to continue watching this." Mm, yeah, I, I know my parents have been like that. They're, yeah, they they'll look at things on YouTube, but. Cons- their, I believe their consummation of uh, consuming con or oh, with that taking in of content. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not the best of the source. Taking in of content um, has it increased. Yeah, so I would, would assume that goes for everyone as well. Yeah, um, of that demographic. Yeah, um, yeah, it's and also you've got kids as well like little kids watching stuff on oh, there as well they are the backbone of like the big just, the big boys <laughs> well, little little kids uh just the backbone of youtube revenue because they yeah. they got the most free time they watch the most stuff they just get the mom's ipad and just watch autoplay until it gets to spider-man and elsa weird videos yeah of things do you, do you yeah. know about those spider-man no i don't actually oh you i'm about to corrupt you my man um all right uh, basically just like uh spider-man elsa uh joker and there's uh, people in like costumes do all these different things okay Which, okay to, to start with it's innocuous just it's adults making low effort content just to get money off. Well, I get ad revenue from little kids who are just watching it because the title. And yeah, a majority of them are innocuous, but you get some of them who get a bit sexually suggestive. Uh, some wow. of them get a bit weird. Yeah, you get like cartoons of Mickey Mouse, like Mickey Mouse dead in gas explosion. That's an actual title, something Holy like shit. that. Uh, you get uh, videos of people like, uh, I don't know, Spider-Man running around with an AR-15. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you get uh, oh, different things like, oh, um, just weird stuff like that. Like, 
oops spider-man uh, like uh, oops what happened here and you got like spider-man and elsa looking surprised with elsa with like a big baby bump and like <sighs> yeah right you know what right that the most like some of the most viewed videos on youtube are like kids songs that's incredibly strange yeah oh what, what's that shark song Baby shark, sure. da, 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 baby shark, da, 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 I mean, you can, I mean, you can sing it if you want, Jeff. Baby shark, copyright strike, da, 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 copyright strike. Da, <laughs> Sorry. Don't take this video down YouTube. Oh no, no, no. But um, yeah, just without kids, YouTube just wouldn't be able to float. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, um. I guess there's different markets, I guess. Like, you notice that a lot of adults and young adults like us watch specific channels and then the kids watch these other channels or whatever, mm. which I'm not slating any of them off, by the way. Oh, no, 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 no. But, yeah, they they um, bank. But talk, talk about ad revenue. Uh, if you're a narrative filmmaker, yeah, you can, even if you can earn a like a following, and uh, you post your narrative films on there, yeah. likelihood is you're not going to earn a lot. Like mm, uh, yeah. you know where uh, Darius Sprit, D for Darius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Legend of a YouTuber. Um, his feature film that he posted on his channel, uh, 2018, yeah. uh, on Sound. He posted it on there because he was uh, like doing the festival circuit and he didn't, he got like deals of distribution, but he didn't like a lot of them. He just thought yeah. a lot of it, he would have to do all the promotion himself, which, yeah, he, he was expecting not to, no, not to do all of it at the very least. So he put it on his channel for free. Okay. A year after. He revealed like what his ad revenue from it was. It was like thirty dollars. Okay. Now, no, but the budget for that film was something like six thousand dollars. Don't quote me on that, but yeah. it was in the thousands. Which, yeah, yeah. Well, that's um, that's really something. It's it's strange because a lot of YouTubers now they have to have sponsorships or they can't just they can't just use the revenue from youtube because of the stuff they talk about like there's this guy called Philion. i don't i don't always agree with everything he says by the way but he's a good example to use um Phileon's a natural i don't know if he would be i guess he's a natural lifter he's a gym guy basically but he's he's pretty natural looking like mm. a lot of a guy if you notice a lot of the guys a lot of the fitness guys on youtube are on steroids or some kind of body enhancement of some sort and um Phileon Phileon criticizes a lot of these youtubers for what they say because at the end of the day people look at their physiques and they think well i can look like that if i'm if I do what this person says. And a lot of the time, those people are selling or sponsored and trying to sell products from companies like Gymshark, for example. And Gymshark use a lot of models that are on steroids and stuff like that. And Phileon can't get sponsorship from those companies because, because he calls all these people out for being on steroids and stuff. Mm. So he has well, he does get sponsorships, but obviously none of the um, none of them sort of um, products. Missing the, uh, the the general male grooming type stuff. Yeah, mm. <laughs> manscape. I was I was thinking Dollar Shave Club, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Sometimes what the YouTuber does can affect what they get in terms of sponsorship, I guess, is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
like if uh well yeah it depends on demographics you're not going to get a makeup channel uh do stuff about um i don't know erectile dysfunction are they but then again you never know oh that's that's so you know what right yeah i was once watching i was once watching a um, video of this guy called chel sonnen and he's like he's an mma analyst he used to be an mma fighter himself Mm. and i was like watching this one video like in my room or something like that and I can't remember where my parents were, but then he just start. Then, like at the beginning of the video, he just starts. You need to get your erectile dysfunction, like, and it was like out loud. I'm like, "Fuck, <laughs> sake, like, turn the volume down." Mm. <laughs> I'm like, you just put that at the beginning of the video straight away. Just go straight into it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Well, I saw another advert to do with like, oh yeah, are you, have you uh, sort of like testicular cancer? Like, oh yeah, check your testicles out, which uh, it's like, oh yeah, why are you running about testicles? But then again, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, no awareness about it, do that. And that fair play to them, like going around the whole thing about using images of pears, which I yeah. Uh, fair dues but no it's yeah it's all <clears throat> it's all good doing that like you you can't just have a taboo on talking about testicles uh to the point where you're not even willing to like talk about risks of cancer and that because you remove the taboo on things like that yeah because like, it's like the whole thing with like um there's a the thing with prostates that people are less likely to get that examined because it's like uh, an insecurity thing about getting things up the bum. Yeah. Just to put a blunt point in it. But yeah, there was the whole um, Cole Pilkington joke about that, actually. Okay. About the fact he won't go and get his prostate checked. <sighs> but he, he did get it checked, but um, it was on Idiot Abroad, actually, about it. Mm. But... Um, yeah, you know, I like I said, uh, I'm not joking. And well, in that that joke I made, well, it wasn't really a joke. It was more of a funny story. But um, obviously, I don't. I'm not going to diss anybody that has, or like, I don't know what's the word. Um, I'm not going to give anybody shit that's got those sort of problems because that's that's horrible. No, no, of course. It's, no, it's, no. it's awful. And it's a really big, I don't know, I guess they're really big insecurities. Yeah. It's very, it's very funny how, like, because I think I'd be pretty insecure about it if I had any of those things. Mm. In fact, I do know somebody that's had um, one of their testicles removed, and that, that took him a long time to get over, you know. It's a mm. very, it's something that, I don't know. Men are very, I guess, don't want it out there, kind of thing. More than anything, sort of. Uh, if if you can't see it, it's not there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I. I don't know, actually. Do you? I guess it's unfair to say with women and men because women and men have different insecurities, and there's yeah. different. I don't know with men I find men have like there's a lot of like taboo areas that men just don't talk about these days yeah like uh, just because something goes up your anus doesn't make you homosexual yeah but there's the whole thing about no I don't want this thing anywhere near my ass thank you very much well yeah there was the whole I guess that was back in the 80s that was kind of a pressure wasn't it like you can't do this because it's homosexual or something mm. like that. So maybe I don't know. Maybe it's something that's still going on. Maybe. Still, well, you have to think. You know, when you're talking about evolution, the eighties wasn't that long ago. Mm. When you think about when you think about equal rights with 
black people and white people. It wasn't that long ago, was it, really, when you think about it? Yeah, because I was out in the 60s, and you talk about the 80s. Yeah. The 60s and the 80s were closer together than the 80s are to us. Yeah. In fact, it's almost twice as twice as long. Yeah. I mean, a lot changes over time, but it wasn't that long ago as well. That's also what you've got to think. And mm. it's still it's still going to linger about for, and these issues are still going to linger about for years to come. Oh, oh yeah. Like, I mean, like there was the whole, like, I don't know if you want to go back in history, there was the whole witch hunt thing back in the, was it the Saxon days or something like that? That was going on oh, for years. 12, 11th to 12th. Again, I could be wrong. Let's just Google just to. <laughs> but yeah, the point I'm making is that, these issues they linger about for years it's just the aftermath of what was going on back then Mm. and obviously the witch hunt thing was going on for years as well oh yeah uh 1692 to 1693 yeah but obviously there was still i imagine there was still a lot of you know, witch calling and stuff like that after that Mm. as well. So it's just like the aftermath of what these events, isn't it, almost? So was the witch trials more of an irrational fear of what they perceived as supernatural wrongs or was it a case of misogyny become violent or maybe a mixture of both, maybe a spectrum depending on who I you're talking about maybe I'm not sure to be honest I I don't know why I drew that comparison but I was just thinking like it's not like aftermaths of like the way we treat people it's always been there yeah and it lingers about for years to come yeah like could you draw a parallel between the word witch and the word bitch <laughs> well, well I, you might laugh but uh, oh, yeah it's often used in similar contexts like yeah. someone might call a woman in the late 1600s um a witch yeah like, uh 300 years later 300 years it doesn't seem that long when you say that like, but 300 yeah. years later someone calls someone a bitch they might mean it in a similar way it might be used in the same vitriolic I, I hate this woman, blah, 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 blah. So it could be, yeah, the word might change, but the meaning and sentiment behind it may not have done. Yeah. Yeah, and that's just what I'm saying, really. It's, it was never to go into that. It was just to use as an example, really. No, no, no. That, that, yeah, that's a very good example, that. Yeah. Yeah. And I forgot what we were even... What I was saying <laughs> after that. Yeah, you talk about social ills. Uh, how do we get to that? Social ills, the different Because we were going on about YouTube sponsorships. Gay, <laughs> uh, the gay anxiety and like uh, the whole thing about prostate stuff. And like, mm, oh, yeah. I don't want this to... Then again, it can be related to a lot of things. Like um, women who recover from... Uh, breast cancer often gets augmentation surgery uh, to like make the structure of their breasts appear similar. Yeah. Um, is there yeah. a similar thing for men? Um, don't they get a fake one? If a they fake... have a test, I believe somebody. I remember somebody coming in and telling us that actually that you can get like a fake testicle i'm not sure okay i'm not sure how legit that is mm. but yeah i don't know it's it's weird how like how like one of our biggest insecurities is something that most people never see Unless you do get it out in the open, then you should probably rethink your life. <laughs> or if Unless... it's your job. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's that as well. Uh... There was that... Did you see that story about... Um... Actually, no. Should we even go into that story? What story? 
No, so basically there was a story out. So this is an OnlyFans model in America. Okay. And she's having to raise funds to pay for her husband's cancer treatment. Oh. As well as the funds she gets from OnlyFans. Okay. That, that's that's interesting. Uh, like more power to her for that. Yeah, there's... Um, I don't know really how I would feel. It depends. I don't really know much about it, to be honest. But um, I guess, I guess, well, the bills are so high in America for medical stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Even even if things were like charged at the price that it cost in in Britain under the NHS, it wouldn't be as yeah. high as America because America it's all competitive between yeah. hospitals is, is never the same yeah yeah there was quite a few people saying that it was disgusting that she's having to raise funds or to get her husband cancer treatment or well, the fact that she had to resort to that or the fact that she is doing that bits of both i think there were some people saying that it's disgusting because medical bills so high then there were people saying well she earns so much money a month why can't she just pay for it herself there's also like taxes only fans take their cut of the money you've got taxes hmm. you've got other things like mortgage maybe or different bills yeah you don't know everyone's financial situation you can't just look at loaded numbers and say yeah that looks like enough because yeah 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 you don't know what else they're paying for and then yeah. the cancer treatment at the top of that it's like yeah I mean, I don't, I kind of have a negative opinion about OnlyFans and it's not so much the people that do it. I think it's more mm. people that pay for it, I think. There's a market there, like uh, yeah. the supply and demand. If the demand's there, why wouldn't the... Actually, no, I've, I think it's more the, uh, well, OnlyFans itself, really. I mean, I don't, I don't want to sound like a boring little shite here or something like that. That I, <laughs> but I would probably get called for it. But um... another hot take from Hayden White. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, OnlyFans is profiting from people's loneliness and mental health. Oh, sorry. Um... That is assuming that that's the only reason. Why? Yeah, yeah, obviously, obviously, yeah, there's a majority of reasons, but I watched a few documentaries on it, actually, and there was, this guy was interviewing these guys and asking why, why would you pay for somebody, for some content of somebody, but you could get free on Pornhub, and they were saying it's not necessarily about what they're showing, on the pages it's about the relationship between them and the person who's putting the content out there because they can message the people on only fans mm. and like talk to them and could stuff you, like that could you not draw a parallel with something like twitch though because people still give money for that parasocial yeah. relationship that's just yeah. not that tends not to be the sex uh, or, or the sex worker type element to it. Yeah, yeah. But um, they were saying it's because they just felt lonely and with lockdown and everything, that's obviously made them even more lonely and stuff like that. Mm. So in a way, I know people have got to make a living and stuff like that, but I think that's a bit... I don't know. I don't think that's right, personally. That maybe... Maybe sometimes the guys bring it on themselves mm. for whatever reason they do, but there's some guys using OnlyFans that genuinely need help, whether it be mental health-wise or whatever you want to call it. Could I pose this to you? Yeah. OnlyFans, transactional VOD, YouTube, um, advertising VOD. Yeah. Where the, the models are different, but basically the creators still get money through the platform. They get a certain share, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. 
But uh, they get the money because people are watching them. Yeah. Now you can get people who are. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Who are still like uh, lonely. Yeah. Having a parasocial relationship with people on YouTube. But that's that same judgment isn't given on on those. Sorry, those people. Hmm. Yeah. Like I said, it's not. There's a variety of reasons they do it. Like it's obviously the sex workers thing as well. Like people pay sex workers for sex or whatever else. Mm. But I don't know. I just, I just think, like some of these models. Well, if you want to call them models or whatever you want to pronounce them as, performance art. Also, yeah, should also consider you know, some of the people they're talking to, what kind of state of mind they're in rather than just the money they're getting from them. Like they should. Mm. Like some guys, like there's other, like all I'm saying is some guys have other issues. What about, because you, um, that might may be a specific part of an audience, but the audience isn't a monolith which uh, maybe there's like different schools of thought behind it. What about if someone has more of a, um, more of a sexual attraction towards, maybe not towards, but as a result of more interaction based the, um, the, like you say, yeah, you'd just be able to like get it for free, but they wouldn't have that same, yeah. Um, well, it wouldn't fill that. Oh, oh that's that's that. bad term yeah. phrase that. But yeah, are they are they? Well, at the end of the day, it's up to people what they do with their own money. But I'm just mm. saying that I think some of these OnlyFans models should also take into consideration some of the people they're talking to. Like a lot of them just care about the money, and they don't like think. Well, maybe that person isn't completely well. Hmm is a well person and they should get help or whatever. Cause I know it's, I know it's all right saying that, Oh, well, they chose to give the money to me, but you know, sometimes they feel like that's their only option and it isn't at the end of the day. It isn't their only option. Mm. Would you count, uh, only fanners, uh, or, or whatever you want to call them, as sex workers? I don't know, because it doesn't necessarily have to be about taking your clothes off and stuff like that, does it? It's all sorts of different things, isn't it? Well, you, prostitutes can entertain their clients with their clothes on. Yeah, well, obviously there's the... the some of them don't even like want the women to take the clothes off, just want them to spend the night with them, basically. But they still come under the bracket of sex worker. I guess so. Or escort. Well, escort will be under that bracket. Sex worker can include porn actors. Yeah. What else? I'm not sure, to be honest. That, oh. That's all I'm saying anyway. That's all I'm oh, saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day... Well, obviously, it's going to die off a bit now because lockdown and everything's starting to lift and people are starting to get back to normal. So maybe that'll take away from it. Maybe. But but, but also, there is, like, obviously, a lot of people are saying that it's wrong that all these models are getting money and getting ridiculous amounts of money. But also, you've got to think that their career is not going to last that long. A lot of them, a lot of them will potentially die off, and eventually it's going to be very hard for them to get a job afterwards, unless they don't show their face. Well, that's where you go under an alias. Yeah, you don't put your real name out if you're gonna. Yeah, but like clothes. I said, well, yeah, like I said though, if you go and work for a company and one of the employees or your boss sees like you in a video 
like, I don't know, fucking somebody else or something like that. Because a lot of these videos, a lot of OnlyFans videos do eventually get leaked to sites like Pornhub, no matter yeah. what you do. And if they see that as going to be like, right, we can't have you because X, Y, and Z, we can't have you representing our company. And that's and that's obviously that's obviously something that the models will have to live with. And that's a taboo that it doesn't need. It doesn't serve a function that taboo. Because, oh, I, I mean, if you call this politics, call this not politics. But my opinion is, sex work is work. Yeah. Consenting adults. Blah 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 yeah. blah. Like. Uh, it's like filling in a contract that you know different things and there's all these different blah 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 blah. It's like if you're um it's like if you're uh like an actor performing and it's like oh you you perform as a drug dealer in this uh film, I like, can't hire you for working with us. It's like well, it doesn't matter. And yeah, that is why people tend to use aliases or maybe not even show their faces, which yeah, yeah, fair enough. But the taboo, like, should someone lose their job because they did OnlyFans? Personally, I'd say no. Yeah, like if, well, if they I, if, I if do... they took their clothes off and started like uh, I don't know having sex with people at, at their place of work then, yeah, I can understand that. But just because you see a video on OnlyFans of someone doing that doesn't mean they're going to spontaneously go off and do that. Is it? I don't yeah. see the link. And, well, yeah, yeah, there's anxiety behind it because of cultural taboo, but the cultural taboo does more harm than good, in my, my opinion. Yeah, um, I do agree with you, Jeff. It's just something I pointed out because mm. it's just what happens. Cause... That's a good point, though. Yeah, because you can criticize these girls, which some I guess some of the criticism is legit, but some of it, but also you've got to think, well, they are gonna earn that they're earning that kind of money now, but what happens in five years' time? Yeah, but more, more models get on there and uh because because you know how YouTube and social media goes, you've either got to keep it fresh or you're gonna fade out. Yeah. So, yeah. If you fade, if they fade out, you know what they're gonna do. Unless I mean, you got... unless unless they've made the money to live off for the rest of their lives, I guess. But if they have mm. to go and get a regular job, it's gonna be a struggle, isn't it? Just say you did some like online stuff, or do you even put it on your CV? I have no idea, to be honest with you, what you'd even do. It's like, well, why have you got this massive career gap in your CV? And it, and you just got to be like... Oh, Unless it's your supplementary yeah. income, then you could just admit it and... Yeah. Yeah. Or just yeah. say, you're a filmmaker. Yeah. <laughs> Coming full circle. Back to film. I, yeah, because... Um, did you know that you can't... Well... I used to work for Tesco, right? Mm. And, you know, when you're a Tesco worker, you're not allowed to say anything about Tesco's on Facebook because you will get sacked. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know if it's changed now, but that was the whole... Well, I've heard a few stories of people losing their jobs over um, saying stuff about Tesco on their Facebook, for example. So all these like hot takes of uh, like oh Amazon shouldn't be um, like exploiting uh, their employees. Does that mean we won't be able to work for Amazon? Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Uh, wah, wah, wah. I mean, I don't know what I'm. I don't know what I could offer Amazon to be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, they make films, and that's sort of the career path we want to get into, isn't it? I mean. Did they actually make films or did they just fund them? No, they make them. They make series. They also distribute as well. Oh, funny yeah, that well, recently, at the beginning of 2021. Are they actually, they, um, are the, is it actually a production company that they've got or yeah. is it? Okay. 
Amazon so it's Originals. Not just, it's not just distribution, then. Well, they do distribution as well. Oh but, yeah, um, oh, yeah. Like uh, independents could uh, submit it, but recently they said, yeah, we're not going to fo- uh, we're not going to distribute or, or host uh, short films or documentaries anymore. Yeah, which is like a massive blow to a lot of people who were doing those films. Which, yeah. All right, yeah, business model, private company, you're allowed to make those decisions. But i got to ask why, because having more content on there, it's not going to affect the main library. And having a larger library means there's more films for people to watch, unless they needed the space or, excuse me, or if they didn't have a quota to fill anymore and they just wanted to, you know, uh, got it down a bit. I don't know. I'm I, I don't work at Amazon, obviously. Uh, <laughs> obviously, you don't, Jeff. <laughs> no, no. Hot takes. Mm. I could. Uh, you know what, right? It's you saying hot takes to me is like just remind me of this sports commentator. His name's <laughs> Stephen A. His name's Stephen A. Smith, and he does this all the time. He like just he's like does these first take things, and he's like he gets very heated. He like. Does it in a Pierce Morgan way, but it's not as bad. <laughs> Where he'll like just like he'll be watching basketball or something, and then straight away they'll just ask him, you know, how do you think they went? He was like, Well, they were fucking shit. Da, 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 da. Well, he doesn't he doesn't swear or anything like that, but mm. you get what I mean. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. a bit irate. Uh, so just to go back to the point of like filmmakers on YouTube and that. David F. Sandberg is often the case that is brought up when it's like, oh, yeah, just like on YouTube, you get noticed, which, okay, it was great in 2013, 2012, uh, when it was picked up. But the name of the game has changed more. There's more filmmakers on YouTube now because, well, arguably because of people like Sandberg and that. Yeah. They say, yeah, you make films and then you get noticed. But using that as a business model, it. Hmm. Yeah. Which, okay, yeah, fair enough. Like, he made Lights Out, a uh, short, and he got noticed by James Wan, and he got to make uh, one of the Conjuring films, that, which, that fair play to him. Uh, which Conjuring film that. was it? I can't remember. Uh, okay. I, I'm, I'm not really into, into that, uh, but no, I, I respect him for that. He also went on to direct Shazam. All right. So, yeah. Yeah. Fair. That's that's cool. That's cool. Mm. Which, I, yeah. Mm. No, sorry. Go, Jeff. Uh, I was uh, just going to say, yeah, fair enough. That's brilliant. Like, people have uh, made it because of his stuff on YouTube. But that is the vast minority of those. You can't just have a little, um, you have to have a cross section of everyone in terms of success on YouTube as opposed to just the top sliver. I think, yeah, because you need to look at it holistically. Now, mm. for the question of can YouTubers um, build a following on YouTube, personally, I'd have to say a following, yes, partly. You, you can't just be on YouTube. You have to be on other places as well. Yeah. But if you want to... Uh, like actually get returns on your investment, make it a career instead of a hobby, then you can't just rely on YouTube. Now, if I were to pass that button on, bat, bat, bat on, bat, bat on onto you. <laughs> Hot takes. <laughs> oh, what would you say? Um, I don't... I mean, obviously, I, like I've said... There's different kinds of filmmaking and whatever you want to class it as on YouTube. If we're talking indie filmmakers or up and coming filmmakers, I don't, I mean, I don't think YouTube, I'm not sure how to say this really. I don't think YouTube, you should rely on YouTube just for putting films out there. I think you should try to go to festivals, try to go to, cinemas or wherever you want to take it for example um because like i said all these all these um like like i was saying with james rolf at cinemasca like he's kind of gone away from filmmaking and done mostly avgn stuff and that's because that's where 
that's his income. And so he has to make those videos to have something coming in. Mm. Basically. So maybe not so much. Maybe okay. not so much. I do believe actually though that YouTube is a great tool to expose projects. Uh, could you elaborate, please? Like, say, for example, there was, I'm going back a few years now, before before the Mortal Kombat film, which has just come out now, um, I've not seen it, so I can't really have a hot take on that, but I didn't, I've heard written mixed things about it. Um, there was a short film called Mortal Kombat Rebirth, and people have been asking for a new Mortal Kombat film for quite some years, and they released this this short film just as an experiment. Well, the director, he was a new up-and-coming director at the time. He dropped out the project anyway. But um, he kind of released this as an experiment to see how it would do, almost. Mm. So he released it on YouTube and other places. It's kind of... It kind of um, feels almost like a leak in a way, but it's not. I think it, I think it was deliberately put out there for the exposure, and it just got a lot of like reaction. It was like a seven-minute short film, I think. Mm. Um, and yeah, it just got people talking about it. It was like, well, what does this mean? Where where has this come from? Like, it's just come out of the blue all of a sudden, and it just got people talking. And I think that's a good example of how YouTube can be used in that way to like expose projects because it was only an indie project to start with and then obviously over the years it's had different directors and stuff like that and obviously the films come out now so maybe maybe that's how it can be used i think it's i think youtube can be used more as an exposure tool rather than somewhere to publish short like films and stuff like that okay so a place to publish your films, what would we say? Amazon, Netflix. You know? Vimeo? Yeah. I don't know. Do people use Vimeo? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I well, I know I know they used to have a few originals on there back in like 2014, I think. I don't know what it's like now on there. It's just a load of people uploading their films once they finish with festivals. Okay. Like some yeah. of it, like you can um, like have Vimeo host your library of things where you say, uh, pay this amount of money to watch this film, this amount of money to watch this film. You, you can use Vimeo for that. Okay. Um, you talk about uh, Amazon. Obviously, uh, people get their films on Amazon, but you also got loads of other streaming services um out there yeah i saw I see one youtuber who um uh put like a film on i think it's called 2 tv i think uh, two or three years ago 2 tv was relatively unknown just like uh maybe a thousand maybe two thousand films at the time now it's been acquired by Fox and then Disney and now they've got um, many more thousands of thousands of films on and you've got a link to Tubi TV on Disney Plus now so people can go straight to it yeah now their film's still on that and has uh, the, the numbers have gone up uh, with Tubi's overall numbers yeah and they managed to get it on easily because they uh, they didn't have uh, well they they wanted more more content to boost boost the library which um, more power to them so yeah maybe we should like keep an eye out for the changing landscape yeah absolutely because it's not we just. Said- you know, well, we said this, didn't we? And I think we said this a few episodes ago about how the internet's helped short films get exposure. Mm. 
because it's not just great for people as makers but it's great for people as watchers because honestly i would i would love to watch some very very low budget films just to see what is out there but it's yeah. just like well where do you find them because you go into like a search engine it's like you search it but you're searching for specific things and obviously it's going to promote things that are more popular and i want to see what isn't as popular i want to see like the yeah okay yeah technical aspects they might not be to the point of like i don't know like cgi in star wars or whatever obligatory yeah. star wars reference in uh in every podcast star wars. but um <laughs> I don't get. I just want to see like the story. What what stories do people want to tell? And for indie people, I, I just I want to I want to see that. And honestly, I only really uh, only really for going through some of these streaming sites in their infancy. Can you watch that sort of stuff? Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah. I, I love that. It's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's like um, it's like foreign films, really, isn't it? They don't mm. get enough exposure, do they? Like our, like we were saying about Parasite, it's like taken how many years for a foreign film to win Best Picture at the Oscars? Trump didn't like it, did he? What well, happened to films like Gone with the Wind? I swear, <laughs> that's like 80 years ago. Yeah. Times have changed. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully it with it winning Best Picture as well, it's going to hopefully open people's eyes up to, you know, maybe foreign cinema is just as good, if not better, in some mm. ways. Yeah, places like Mubi, that's yeah. one with a more, more of a curated uh, site. There's got to there's got to be more. Like we can have another episode based on just like <laughs> very. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what what do you think to this, Hayden? Um, we have a, an episode where we look at say five extremely low budget films each that no one's ever heard of. That have uh, came out in the past like two or three years. Violent shit. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, one's that like relatively unknown that no one's really seen but we have to talk about them uh give our thoughts on them and just basically talk about those what, what do you think to that i mean yeah, yeah it'd be sure. homework but yeah yeah sure yeah maybe gets a, a guest to is seen some as well I, I don't know yeah 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 definitely bro that'd be great i, I just uh, whenever i've seen like a very low budget film or a low budget film of uh a prominent filmmaker uh like shane, early on in there i'll tell you what i'll tell you what any of shane meadows earlier films mm. are a good watch i haven't seen any of those but i need to yes you do because um, it's on the proverbial list. Dead Man's Shoes is great. Mm. It's low budget, uh, which one of our lecturers actually worked on it. So giving him some big ups there, bigging him up a bit. But um, yeah, Pie. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. Yeah, Aronofsky. Uh, following Nolan. Yeah, Nolan reference as well. Got to get that yeah. bingo. <laughs> we nearly went an episode without mentioning him, but nah, saved it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, but honestly, like Kill Kill List is a good film as well. It's a good British film. Um, the endings, the ending will divide you a bit, but the film's pretty good. Mm. Oh, well, Pusher. Um, for but Nicholas winning ref, and that's his first feature film with Mads Mikkelsen, who that was his first feature film. As an actor as well, according to IMDb. Yeah. But um yeah, Pusher. Uh, all three of them I think are great. Like they're they're very much different stories, but like yeah. based on like a lot of the same characters, but uh, different characters are of different like prominence in yeah. the story. Like, it's just 
I don't know, something about them. Just find them. They're not in, uh, like action packed and tense, but they're very gritty, down to earth, and have a certain feel to them. Yeah, yeah. So then again, you look at Drive, which I guess everyone who's watching this has seen Drive. If not, go do so. Uh, yeah, Drive's great. It's fantastic. But yeah, Windy Refn does have a doesn't know how to create a vibe. Yeah. He he do be vibing though. Vibing. But uh yeah, like no, should we actually do that? Uh what watch a load of uh extremely low budget indie films. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh. I've seen some extremely low ones. There's some good ones, there's some terrible ones, but that's how it is. That's how it is oh, with yeah. mainstream films. Yeah, true that, true that. Thank you everyone for watching and uh, sticking with us through this. Yes. Yes. And how to cut grass the right way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, hopefully you know how to uh, cut your grass properly and we shall see you. See you soon. Yeah. Maybe next week. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully, probably, hopefully, well, hopefully, probably, actually, maybe. yeah. Well, why not? unless unless Jeff ditches it again, oh. which course you will not see it. <laughs> Bro, I, I know. Like, <laughs> wait, wait, when you were indisposed last week, I'm always indisposed. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what I'm like actually. I appear sometimes and then I don't. Apparently, everybody says I have a teleporting ability, which I don't get where that comes from. Right, that you should be hired by the military if. Well, I mean, unless you already are, then you probably won't be able to tell us, so. I definitely, I'm good at Splinter Cell. I'm good at those video games. Yeah, that, that's all the Metal training Gears, you need. Metal Gear, <laughs> Metal Gear Solid. I know how to disappear and hide in the cardboard boxes out the way. <laughs> well, thank you, guys, and thank you. see you next time. See you.